Dr. Gee, welcome. Thank you, Jim, I'm glad to be here. Good to see you. Um, you are one of the most optimistic human beings I have ever met. So let's begin the program. I'm gonna give you kind of a dose of realism and ask you to respond to it. Okay. Ohio losing population uh, each decade by the Groves, our political strength in Washington declining. 50 years ago, we had 26 congressional representatives. It could be as low as 18 next year. Unemployment continues to hover around 11%. Manufacturing base in the state declining. None of that includes the fact that Ohio has a little bit of snow and some cold temperature days. If I'm thinking of moving my family here, or if I'm a student thinking about coming here, or a business relocating here, if I look at that, I'm probably inclined to say, no thanks. How do you respond? Well, I respond by saying that, uh, first of all, we're in the middle of part of this country. We have 11 million Ohioans who love this state, and they want to move back. I live in Baxley, Ohio, uh, where, uh, where a large population, uh, a large portion of the population there have moved back because when they find opportunities, particularly younger people, they'll do so. Uh, the, the thing you need to understand about, about Ohio, as I have traveled the state, is the fact that Ohioans love Ohio. Uh, you move to California, you move to Colorado, you move to other places, uh, they may like the warm weather, but they're not necessarily as dedicated to the state. The second thing is, is yes, I mean, we have uh, tremendous economic challenges, so does everyone else. The, the reason I'm optimistic about Ohio, by the way, I moved back, as you remember. Right. I mean, I was, <laughs> I was in one of those warm weather places. And the reason I moved back is, is the fact that I think that, uh, I think that it is precisely the right time for this state to reassert itself uh, with the opportunities that we have uh, with, with this kind of balanced economy we have. Remember, agriculture is our biggest economic engine, as a matter of fact. So, uh, with the quality of the people, the quality of, of the life that we lead, and the fact that I think that we have uh, heartland values, that makes me very optimistic. And I am not just jingoistic about it. I do believe what I say. You know, I was born in Ohio as well, and I have moved back. But there is something about Midwestern modesty. How do you break through that? Well, I mean, you there know, seems I, to be the psychology that we can't break through. Well, I talk about it. I, I think that's maybe our biggest detriment. If you take a look at it, you know, on the east and the west coast, they, 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 they brag all the time, nothing to brag about. Here we have <laughs> much to brag about, and we don't uh, tell our story as well as we should. And I think that we need... Uh, one of the great characteristics of the of, of Midwestern folk, and I'm a born again Midwesterner, as you know, is is the fact that we have this modesty. On the other hand, I think we need to tell our story better, and that's one of the opportunities. Being the president of the largest, most complex university in the country that has a worldwide population, worldwide impact, it's my opportunity to be able to do that. Your budget uh, at Ohio State bigger than the state of Delaware, um, over four billion dollars. Yeah. When you look at this economic downturn across the country, and specifically here in Ohio. The Buckeyes have kept going, the research at OSU has kept going, the hospital has kept going. Really, do you look at Ohio State sort of as the economic heart that has managed to keep Ohio afloat in this in this difficult economy. I, I believe that higher education, and most specifically, I believe that uh, Ohio State University is the economic engine. Because what and and now what we're doing, which is the most exciting thing, is we're taking this uh, vast amount of research we do, you know, uh, finding the cure for cancer, finding other things, and we're going to commercialize that. We're going to turn it into uh, commercial opportunities. We're going to turn it into jobs. We're going to do it much more quickly and uh, in a much more um, dedicated way. One of the things we haven't done very well as an institution, we are now one of the major research universities in the country, uh, and we rank in the top 10 in that regard, but we rank uh, fairly low in terms of our commercialization side. But that is our opportunity. So that's the upside of what the university is doing. We are the economic engine that will drive this state. Let me ask you, uh, we've seen this past week in the news, uh, protests. Uh, some of the scenes uh, from some of these universities uh, in California, for instance, this past week, remind me something right out of the 1960s. Mm -hmm. Tuition costs, a big concern for college students across the uh, country. We had a tuition freeze here in Ohio for a while, but as you look ahead at the next few years, it, it, it just seems to me that if the state doesn't have the money mm -hmm. to fund the university system, the only other alternative for a funding uh, mechanism and for revenue is to increase student tuition, to have students pick up that cost. Where do you see Ohio State in that picture, and how concerned are you well, as you, you look at the next few years? Uh, uh, Jim, you know, there, there are a variety of uh, approaches to, to funding of higher education. First of all, uh, only about 13% of our budget comes from the state of Ohio. We are, uh, as I joke sometimes, we are, we, we are beloved by the state, but we are a state-located university, <laughs> uh, not supported necessarily. But saying that, we have, um, thanks to bipartisan support in the legislature, we have fared better than most, uh, most states and most universities. Um, and 
and because of that, we've not given a tuition increase in three years. Uh, Ohio State is one of the great educational bargains in America, a world-class university that charges $8,000 for in-state students. Now, are we going to be able to keep that cap forever? No, but we're, but we're working very hard. We have this big Student First, Student Now initiative, raising lots of money to make certain that every student who applies to the university is going to be able to afford to come to the institution. We are reinventing the institution. We're consolidating. We're uh, eliminating. We're adding in ways that will uh, provide uh, net opportunities for us to grow our budget. We're trying to raise lots of money, a variety of other things. So, 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 so it's not simply by tuition that we're going to continue to fund ourselves. And I, by the way, believe this. I, I, you know, I do not give up on the state supporting the university quite the country. I believe if, if it's true that we are the economic future of the state, then that is where the money should be invested, and I believe that they'll do that. When you see those scenes in the news, mm -hmm. uh, what goes through your mind? <laughs> it reminds me of when I was there. Not right, just, yeah. I, you know, I've been there. <laughs> I've, had, I've had students. I actually have a bullhorn in my office that I've used frequently to uh, tell students to get the heck out of my place, uh, you know, from, uh, from, from previous institutions. Um, it reminds me of the, of the frustration. There is a level of frustration. I, I mean, you know, indeed I am. I am optimistic about Ohio and Ohio State, but there is a level of frustration out in that country. Out in the country, we all need to understand. Uh, I think that we need to talk straight. I think we need to um, deal uh, very clearly with it. We don't need to uh, hide behind our offices, our programs, or uh, behind some veil. And and and. Um, uh, and one of the blessings that I have at Ohio State is we have these incredible students who are very savvy about the, uh, the political process, about understanding the values of the institution, where we can go, and they are our partners. I've heard you say uh, in, in speeches recently that you want to take Ohio State from an elephant to a ballerina. Mm -hmm. In a nutshell, what does that mean? Well, what that means is the fact that, uh, you, you know, the 550 reasons that I love Ohio State, one of the things that, uh, that, that, that uh, I find most discouraging is, 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 uh, is that we are overly bureaucratic. Um, and, and so we have to reinvent ourselves. We have to become very, very light on our feet. Um, I hate it when someone says to me, well, you can't do that, Mr. President. I say, why? Well, that's, uh, well, they say, that's because that's the way we do things, uh, always do things at Ohio State, as if William Oxley Thompson himself <laughs> dictated that. And so the purpose of, uh, of becoming a ballerina is to make ourselves better, but also to make ourselves less bureaucratic and more responsive to our faculty, our staff, our students, and certainly to the people of Ohio. Two other quick things before we have to take a break. Um, you were very assertive uh, when talking about the BCS a possible mm. playoff system, right. that we remember that these are student athletes. When you see a T. t Boone Pickens, uh, mm. as an example, donate $165 million to Oklahoma mm. State, specifically for football and athletics, does that concern you at all, that maybe the focus of higher education now is becoming athletic-driven? I, I think the arms race in, in, uh, in college athletics is really absurd. I'm, I'm blessed to be in an institution that is totally self-funded in terms of its athletic programs. It's very successful, as you know. Um, we have one of the, if not the most successful athletic program in the country, saying that, yes, I think that, uh, you know, remember, I'm the guy who eliminated athletics as, as a department at, at Vanderbilt. I believe that the notion of athletics being a part of the university, totally integrated, not isolated and separated. And, and, and when you have that kind of uh, an approach, uh, that Oklahoma State has, and you notice they're building separate things for this, we're building separate things for that, we're building separate things for uh, for athletics alone. That is not the way that uh, we can manage an institution. Athletes, uh, our, our, our fans see a James Laronitis, this is my example, a James Laronitis out on the football field with a football uniform on. James Laronitis I knew very well. I picked him up one day and he was wearing a backpack. I see, I see these students with backpacks on and that's what we have to uh, remember. It's a balance in terms of higher education and athletics. If one of these students came into your office uh, and said, uh, Dr. Gee, uh, I'm 19 years old, mm -hmm. freshman, sophomore, we're drinking beer, mm -hmm. uh, but we don't want to break the law doing it. Do they make a point there? Do they make a case that maybe we should re-examine lowering that drinking yeah, age? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think that, I, I think again, this is one of those kind of omnibus approaches that we have. We say, well, uh, and, and, and Mothers Against Drunk Driving and others, these are very credible groups. But when we treat everyone as if they are McDonald's hamburgers, then we make a, then, 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 then we create a problem. On my campus, in a controlled environment, I believe um, that uh, we ought to talk about moving the drinking age back to 18, because then we can be um, then we can be uh, colleagues together. How we work this uh, through with our students that um, would make more sense to me. All right, more with uh, Dr. Gee and our State House reporters. Uh, they'll join us in just a second. But as we head to break, let's take a look at some of the news headlines out of the State House this week.